Good morning. Welcome. Hmm. That last song just keeps reverberating through my mind. Holy, holy, holy. The power of beholding what's beholding you. My title is a kind of fun way to express that there is something powerful about getting in touch with the wow of the now moment. And I'm going to be talking about this discovery of the extraordinary in our present moment, which leads to our ability to experience wonder and awe. When we choose to dwell in the now moment, we're able to behold the wonders around us, and we're also able to behold the fact that we are wondrous ourselves, being created, made in the image and likeness of God. We realize that instead of shock and awe, it is wonder and awe that allows us to, uh, to defeat the enemy that we often label as fear, worry, anxiety, discouragement, or a sense of separation from each other and from God. It is our sense of wonder and awe which returns us again and again to that which is precious for us personally in our lives. There are three experiences that I'm going to be speaking about uh, this morning. One is wow, one is awe, and the other is wonder. Do you know that when you were born, God said, oh wow, look what I've created. It says so in Genesis. When God, or divine spirit, saw that all that it had made was good. Wow is an acronym for works of wonder. You are a work of wonder, and I am a work of wonder. We are. Wow. In Genesis 1, verses 25 through 27, we read that we were created, and we were blessed, and we were empowered on the sixth day of creation. Genesis 1, 25. God made the beasts of the earth after their kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creeps on the ground after its kind. And God saw that it was good. Genesis 1.26. Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea, over the birds in the sky, and over the cattle all over the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. I don't know about you, but that's kind of creepy. <laughs> but you get, you get what God was saying over everything. <laughs> and then Genesis 1:27, God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created them, male and female, he created them. And then God tells us that we are awesome. We are a wow, a work of wonder. Blessed, and we are a blessing in these words from Genesis 128. God blessed us, and God said to us, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue it and rule over the fish of the sea and over the birds in the sky and over every living thing that moves on the earth. Then in verse 29, God issues the very first behold that we find in the King James Bible. Now, there are another 1,297 other beholds in the King James Version, but in Genesis 129, God issues the very first behold. Now, I love the word behold. Okay. Uh, it's a very spiritual word. Uh, and always in the Bible, when the angels came with a, with a great message to someone, they always said, behold, I bring you tidings of good joy. Or behold, unto you is born a savior. Or behold this, or behold that. And they were really saying, hey, pay attention, okay? I've got something good for you. Behold. Notice that they never give a behold if it's a negative thing. It's always a positive, life-affirming experience. Behold, I bring you, I give you, I share with you. So behold means to view, it means to face something. It means to have regard for something and to hold intensely, to observe fully. And 
usually it's associated with something good for us, something that is going to appear or is appearing in our life experience. Behold it. Behold is a kind of contemplation as well. Okay. Um, can you think of beholding without feeling elevated? Behold. Behold also represents a responsibility on our part. Uh, we are to behold the ways of God. We also need to behold the ways that we experience and express life. And as a result of beholding, we seek to align ourselves more and more with that which we are beholding. Like attracts like. And Jesus said, behold. And if what we're beholding, that is what we're fixing our eyes on, our mind on, our attention on, is then is God, then what we are beholding is the very thing that is holding us. A number of years ago, I wrote a song called In the Arms of God's Love. And there have been many times when I have felt the truth of the words of this song. I have felt that presence of God that we call divine love holding me up when trouble uh, knocked me down and was working to keep me down, using fear and intimidation on me. And I bet you have experienced the same lifting up or being held in divine love when you have experienced problems and difficulties. In Deuteronomy, excuse me, Deuteronomy 33, 27, we have the verse that says, eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms, and he shall throw out the enemy from before you and shall destroy them. Now, we understand in unity that the enemy is not something out there. It's not a person. It's not really a situation. It is something in us. It is an error belief system. It is a fear. It is a worry. It is the feeling of wanting revenge or uh, the feeling of shame or guilt. It is, it is uh, something that seeks to block the flow of God's presence in us. As the beloved little children's character Pogo said, we have met the enemy and he is us. Again, it is that something in us that seeks to block this flow of divine light and love in us. But behold is a beautiful word. We are told to keep our eyes open, to make sure that we are seeing and hearing clearly and accurately so that we can make our decisions based on the guidance and the insight that we receive from Christ within rather than from a situation that is troubling us without. It indwelt Jesus, this Christ, and he actualized it, and we are taught to do the same. Divine order, it stopped. Okay. I like uh, very much what uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith writes in his book, Spiritual Liberation. Fulfilling your soul's potential. And he writes about beholding. On page 60, he says, we are spiritual warriors. Circumstances arise and hard times come so that we may grow through them. This doesn't mean that God is gifting us with a problem, okay? But something about us so on a soul level wants to grow. We want to expand. We want to experience more of life. And so we draw learning experiences into our lives. He writes, when we look back on some of our challenging experiences, we've got to admit that we wouldn't trade what we have gained, what we have learned from those difficult experiences for remaining the same as we were in that place before we went moved through that situation. Michael writes that during those times when we realize that we have been held hostage to tyranny of trends, he uses that term a lot, the tyranny of trends. That is, when we feel like we are trapped into doing what everyone else does, the trends, following the way that they follow, instead of following that inner guidance that we have. 
He says, when we find ourselves locked up and feeling hostage to these trends, just laugh, he says, and be grateful that you busted yourself. And I thought, that's kind of an interesting <laughs> turn of phrase. And I thought immediately of busting yourself out of prison, OK? Um, he says, this is the beginning of being able to see clearly. Give thanks that you have become sensitive enough so that you realize what's happening before you really get caught up in negative reactions. We are beginning to enter, he says, the beholding state of consciousness, witnessing rather than reacting to things. And each of us has arrived, he said, on planet Earth for this very thing, to behold, to participate in the adventure of exploring the truth that we are, spiritual beings having a human incarnation, a human experience. We are adventurers in consciousness. And just as we meet different aspects of ourselves when we travel to a new country or a new state or someplace where we've never been before, so too do we experience a new level of our being when we discover dimensions within ourselves. Be bold when beholding. Michael Beth with declares, be bold enough to step out without knowing how things are going to end but trusting enough to break through the safety net that you have created for yourself. He says that we need to be willing to experience the hero's journey, venturing out, experiencing challenges, moving through challenges, transcending them, and returning homeward, transformed by them. So what is awe, anyway? New studies show that awe is a dramatic feeling with the power to inspire, to heal, and to change our thinking and allow us to bring uh, communities together. A year ago, I clipped a newspaper article from the Salina Journal. It was uh, an article that appeared in the Parade magazine that's in the journal. This was uh, October of last year. and. Uh, I put it away somewhere to use, and then I completely forgot where I put it, okay? So I had to download the article again. I love the article. It begins with two brothers, and one of them is a uh, ex-military, and he's suffering from uh, uh, having bad flashbacks from his experience in the military, and his younger brother. And they decided to take a trip together. And they were climbing, they were out in Arizona, and um, they were climbing some mountains out there. And uh, they were arguing all the way up, OK? They, they just kept at each other, OK, for some reason, OK? Uh, and um, they couldn't see very well beyond this. And, and their focus was on the negativity between the two of them, OK? And uh, the story goes that when they reached the top of this mountain that were climbing, they, they stopped. They were awestruck by the beauty that they saw out there. They completely forgot what they were arguing about. Okay? And this scene, this feeling, the brothers said, was a feeling of awe. And all of a sudden, we really couldn't even think about what we were arguing because this view, it took our breath away. And the, um, the person who wrote the article, uh, her name is uh, Scott. And she said that this interested her. And she began to explore this idea of awe. And um, she, uh, she got in touch with two researchers from uh, the University of California, um, Dr. Kaler and Dr. Putin. And they, were doing, they had been doing research on awe for three years now. Uh, they had received a grant from the Templeton uh, association and were doing some experiments. They were exposing people to pictures and experiences that would evoke awe, surprise, uh, humility, a, va a variety of different uh, human feelings. And they, they discovered several things about awe. They discovered that awe caused us to stop just like the brothers. They stopped doing what they were doing, okay? The view, the feeling, the experience was overwhelming. 
and it calmed them immediately. Unlike certain emotions where we get excited about things, uh, and those trigger, they said, the flight or fright syndrome in us. But awe doesn't do that. Awe simply stops us in our tracks. And this pause gives us time to reflect, to think about what we're seeing, what we are experiencing. So number one, awe allows us to think differently about situations. It stops the train of thoughts that we have been going, that we have been uh, experiencing, and we find ourselves with a certain distance from that negative experience, and we can think differently about it. Number two, all binds us together. They said that facing a great vista, like a, a starry sky, um, the Grand Canyons, uh, any works of nature like that that lift us up, elevate us, um, help us to forget our ego self. And we move from me to we simply because of this view, this vista, this feeling that this vista generates in us. Uh, the psychologists report that astronauts feel this in the extreme when they are at a distance and they look back on the Earth, they have this feeling that they are one with all humanity. And I, they didn't mention it because this article was uh, 2016, uh, so they did not mention the eclipse. But I imagine that the folks who actually saw the eclipse, and I know that there are some of you who have, uh, have probably experienced this connection this feeling that you are one with all. At that moment, everyone watching that eclipse probably forgot about the antagonism that they had with their neighbor. And that focus on that eclipse probably forgot that there are warring nations in this world. At that moment, watching that eclipse probably forgot that they think of themselves as unworthy of God's blessings. That feeling of awe removes all of that. Now, granted, awe is a temporary experience. And one researcher suggests that we find a way to anchor experiences that cause us to feel awe. Uh, for example, he said when he is out in nature, and viewing something that makes him or causes him to feel awe. He likes to play some kind of music with that so that when the scene is gone and he plays that music, it triggers that awe feeling again and he can relive the benefits of awe. I thought that was an interesting way to do that. Now, the thing is that we have to allow ourselves time to experience awe. And the psychologists were saying that most everybody in our culture is awe-deprived. Even the children are awe-deprived. Uh, we are connected with our devices. We are in our offices. Um, and we're not spending much time outdoors and connecting with people personally. And this makes us awe-deprived. We experience fewer situations that bring that sense of, wow, to us. So it is important for us to stop some of the doing so that we can engage in being. In her book, How to Speak Unity, in a chapter called Being, the author, Temple Hayes, asks, are we human beings or human doings? Interesting question. She explains that in our culture, we have created this belief that we have to be busy all the time, and that busy uh, means that we are important. To achieve this sense of importance, we often, she says, push ourselves past our natural limits. She said, we were created as human beings, not human doings. So it is important that we incorporate some regular times to be rather than do. Psalm 46.10 reminds us, be still and know that I am God. 
meaning we are to be still and know that this presence in us is God. Isn't this an awesome thought? Right here, right now, you have the living presence of God within you. Now, if we really understood what that meant, what couldn't we do? What peace couldn't we bring to our world and our troubled situations? What love couldn't we express if we really knew this? And so that was Jesus' job, to show that this can be done, to show that we are moving in that way of discovering and expressing that awareness. In the space of stillness, we are able to relax and to let go. And this is how we regain our sense of wonder and awe, surrendering the stress and the strain. Also in uh, the journal, um, actually this was yesterday's newspaper, Saturday's newspaper, the information about Cassini, have you all read that? Uh, this is Cassini has died. It is the spacecraft that NASA has had for 20 years uh, circling Saturn and sending back pictures of the rings and Saturn's many moons back to Earth. And uh, it finally disintegrated in the atmosphere of Saturn. And they knew that it was coming to that time. And uh, it's interesting about the article because some of the people at NASA cried. It was like family. This satellite had been uh, for 20 years faithfully sending back pictures. And online, these are wonderful pictures of Saturn's rings okay, and the many moons and where they are located. Now, I don't know about you, but space stuff uh, causes me to feel awe. Okay? The NASA site and looking at all the planets and uh, in the hemisphere, th this is really, this is cool. I also love science fiction, okay? And all the special effects that go on in these movies, this is magical to me. Um, other things that cause me to feel awe are taking photographs, um, traveling to new places, uh, experiencing new things. And I'd like you to think about what is it? What is it that brings you the feeling of awe? And it doesn't have to be some big, super-duper thing, okay? Uh, noticing a flower, how it is designed perfectly, and the colors, okay? This can be an experience of awe. Okay. <clears throat> Hiking, bicycle club, book club to share ideas and inspiration. The thing is that in order not to stay all, in, all deprived, we need to get out. That may mean getting out in nature and walking. Uh, the psychologists suggest that we all go on all walks. Go out in our neighborhood, find stuff. Look at stuff you've never taken the time to look at before. I'm thinking that that's probably like smell the roses, okay? But more than that, touch them, feel them, experience them. And this is where awe is. With our relationships with others, realize who they are. Realize that you are connecting with God when you connect with someone else. That's awesome. And they asked people, what are the things that allow you to feel awe? And several people responded with different things. One person said, well, it's when I see a total stranger doing kind things for someone. Another person said, well, it's when I become aware that God is. That's when I feel awe. And another said, well, when I lie back in the grass and I'm, I'm watching the formation of the clouds, uh, I lose track of time. And uh, there were others, some who sing, play music, do, do uh, art things, okay? Um, Anything that brings you that feeling of awe, try to find ways to keep that alive in your experience. And in this way, you will be beholding what is beholding you. God bless you.
And we're going to go right into our meditation. I invite you to sit back and close your eyes. Thank you. <laughs> to teach yourself how to relax, I want you to tense your body. Every, every inch of your body, your forehead down to your toes, tense. Hold that for a couple of seconds and then let go and take a breath. Do that once again, tense up, okay? Teach your body what it means to relax and let go. And as you continue to be aware of your inhalation and exhalation, let go of anything that is blocking your experience of awe, your experience of wonder, your experience of wow, recognizing that you are a work of wonder. And everyone else is a work of wonder. In this moment, I acknowledge my natural ability to let go and to enter a conscious awareness of my awesomeness. I invite you to think these words to yourself if they're comfortable. I allow myself to get in touch with my awesomeness. I am a temple of the presence and power of God, the source of all that is. And in choosing to let go of what blocks this awareness, I choose to be aware of the gifts of the now moment, the power of change. The power for transformation is in this present moment for me in my life. I open myself to it. I breathe into the feeling of awe. I am awesome. This universe is awesome. And everyone, everything in this universe is awesome. A work of wonder. And I allow myself to see this now. And as I go forward in this day, I let myself be aware of the awe that rises up in me when I encounter a work of wonder. And we allow ourselves to feel a sense of gratitude for this awareness, for knowing who we are, what we are, and what we are capable of. Thank you, God. Amen.